today. We have great PC hardware deals. Intel shows off their discrete GPU. RTX 4000 is built on this and terrible news for Ryzen 7000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, while PC hardware has been unbelievably expensive over the last year, things are finally looking up. In fact, there's some downright deals right now, so I thought I'd quickly go over some of the best ones, and I'll have affiliate links to each of these in the description. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. So first we have Intel's 12700K, which is currently $45 off on Newegg with the code. The 12600K is also on sale with a different code. Then we have AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X, which is currently over $100 off on Amazon. Moving to storage, Samsung's 1TB PCI Express 4.0 980 Pro SSD is currently 33% off on Amazon. Next we have the fully modular Thermaltake 850W PSU for $30 off. And finally, we've got the ever popular Razer Death Adder mouse, which is a whopping 64% off. We're talking this bad boy is only $18.15. Basically, if you haven't picked one up yet, or you need a backup, you can't beat that. And of course, there are numerous other deals right now, so make sure to check those out. Now, if you love PC hardware deals, you've got to sign up for the GamerMail Notification Squad, the completely free newsletter that notifies you with great deals on your favorite PC hardware, as well as when new hardware is released. And before you skip this, don't worry. I'm only going to send you important stuff like CPU releases, GPU releases, etc. You won't get a bunch of spam or anything like that. And let's be honest, these days it's really tough to keep up with all the release dates. So let me do it for you. And it's free, so you've got nothing to lose. Just visit the the link in the description to sign up and let me know what you hope to get notified on down in the comments below. Next up for today, in a new video from Intel, the company shows off their new Arctic Sound GPU. For those who don't know, Arctic Sound is built from Intel's DG2 GPU, yet it's made for data centers. Arctic Sound M only comes with 128 execution units and is powered by a single 8-pin connector. The big upside here, though, is that it supports AV1 video encoding. Well, in a new video from Intel, they discuss the benefits of AV1, like their claim that AV1 can lower your bitrate requirements by 30% while maintaining a similar level of quality. With this, Arctic Sound can support up to 8 simultaneous 4K streams or a whopping 30 1080p streams. This would, of course, be great for streaming services like Netflix, which currently supports AV1 as long as you have the right hardware to decode it. At the end of the day, while Arctic Sound won't win any performance competitions, it certainly has a place in the market. Next up, we have a couple huge leaks on NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4000 GPUs. Starting things off, we have a new tweet from leaker Moore's Law is Dead. In it, he mentions PCI Express 5.0, which I'll get to in just one second, but then he claims that Ada Lovelace will actually be built on TSMC's 4 nanometer process. For those who don't know, NVIDIA's recently announced Hopper GPU is actually based on TSMC's 4N process, which is a revision of the 5 nanometer process, so it isn't a full node change, but it's obviously improvement over 5 nanometers. And up until now, the RTX 4000 series was rumored to be on their 5 nanometer process. The thing is that AMD has already confirmed that their next-gen RDNA 3 GPUs will be built on both 5 and 6 nanometers, so NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs will apparently be built on a better process compared to AMD, and that could make things really interesting. AMD's rumored to release an MCM design with their next-gen cards, so it was expected that AMD would easily beat NVIDIA. But with the company being on a better node, we shall see. Remember that NVIDIA's RTX 3000 cards are on a significantly worse node than AMD's RX 6000 cards. One odd thing about NVIDIA's next-gen cards is that at least according to known leaker copite 7 Kimmy, Ada Lovelace only supports PCI Express 4.0. That's surprising because Hopper supports PCI Express 5.0. Of course, there isn't really a need for it with current gen gaming cards, but it is supposed to come with the PCI Express 5.0 connector. Either way, NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs are looking better than ever. And lastly for today, I've got some terrible news on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 CPUs. In a new report from Tom's Hardware, they've been able to confirm through multiple sources in the supply chain that the upcoming X670 and B650 chipsets will only support DDR5. Oh, come on! 
That's obviously terrible news because even months after its initial release, DDR5 is significantly more expensive than DDR4. And of course, this was bound to happen eventually, given any time a new standard is released, the older standard is typically phased out. The issue is that Intel's current Alder Lake supports both DDR4 and DDR5. Now, I will say that there are a couple potential reasons AMD may have done this. For one, their next-gen Infinity Fabric may utilize the much faster memory speeds. Remember that their interconnect is only as fast as your memory. So unlike Intel's Alder Lake, which doesn't see a big advantage from DDR5 versus DDR4, AMD's Ryzen 7000 might. That or it may be to help make their AM5 platform last longer. Remember that Ryzen 7000 is set to be the first CPU to support their next-gen AM5. So AM4 will be done. But don't forget that AM4 has lasted for multiple generations, something Intel can't say with their CPUs. AMD's even recently added support for Ryzen 5000 on their oldest 300 boards, and we know that AMD plans on AM5 having a similar lifespan as AM4, so this could be a way to make that process easier. DDR6 could easily come out during the lifespan of the platform, so they would then have to support upwards of three memory types on one platform. Basically, while it makes sense, it still sucks. With that said, Tom's Hardware has confirmed one other thing that's really interesting. According to them, AMD is planning to use a chiplet design for their X670 chipset, meaning instead of using one chip for the B650 and one for the X670, AMD is using the same chip in both but the X670 just uses two. So you get more connections, but using one chip can help to cut the costs. At the end of the day though, I'm still pretty upset that Ryzen 7000 looks to require DDR5. So while that does it for today, what do you think about DDR5 being forced on Ryzen 7000? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.